Hey everybody, it's Paula here from the XR Club and welcome to today's video. In today's video, we're going to look at reconciling accounts using Power Query. If you're watching this video on YouTube, there's a link below the video to an article. I would recommend that you hop over to the article and you have a read of it because there's more details and another example of how you can reconcile accounts using Power Query. At the end of this video, you will have a learn and earn activity. That's right, here with the Exile Club, you can learn and earn at the same time because we will reward you for taking part in our learn and earn activities. So that's at the end of the video. Please do stay tuned. In the meantime, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notifications button so you don't miss another Excel, Power BI or DAX video from us again. So we're going to reconcile some accounts using Power Query. We have two tables of data and I've put both of these tables of data into Excel. But it would be quite common if you are reconciling a bank account to have a bank file downloaded as a CSV file and maybe even a nominal dump downloaded as a CSV file. And in those cases, you can connect to the CSV files directly using Power Query. In this case, because I've put them into tables, I'm going to add them basically from Excel from table and range. Now you can do this from the data ribbon and if you select one of the tables and this is our bank statement and we're going to select this from table range and add it to our Power Query Editor. Now when we add it to our Power Query Editor, our window, our Power Query window opens up and the query will be named the same as the actual table was named and in this case we named it bank. Now we're going to do some transformations to this particular table. The first transformation that I am going to do is I am going to replace all of the nulls with zeros. So I'm going to replace values and from place values I'm going to put in null and I'm going to replace it with zero. Now the reason for doing this is that when you go to the next step of creating a custom column the nulls will cause problems. So next I am going to add a column and I'm going to add a custom column. Now the reason I am going to add this column is so that we have a value on both tables that actually can match each other. So let's call this a value. Now this is our bank statement and our bank, on our bank statement our debits and our credits are opposite to our nominal ledger. Now we want to come up with a minus value for our checks and our withdrawals and a positive value for our deposits. So we could put in credit and select insert minus our debits, insert and select OK. Now we have a column for our values. With this now I am going to close and I am going to load to. Now what am I going to load this to? Well, in this case, I am only going to create a connection, nothing else but a connection. And when you do this, it creates a virtual table. Now, I have our nominal on a different sheet. And again, as I said, this could be a CSV file that you're connecting to. So I've just pulled in the table and I'm going to make the same transformation steps again. I'm going to copy these two columns or I'm going to select these two columns and I'm going to replace the nulls with zero and I'm replacing the nulls with zero because as I said when we go to put it in our custom column the calculations won't work. So now I have my nulls converted I can put in my custom column and I can say my debit minus my credit insert and I'm going to rename this as well value. Now the re na reason I've renamed this value is now we have these two columns on both tables with the same header. And I'm going to just select OK there. Now what I can do is I can close and load to. And yet again, I am only going to create a connection. So now we have two connections. We have our bank and we have our nominal. I'm going to start with our bank. And from our bank, what I'm going to do is I am going to reference 
this query. Now, when you reference the query, it takes the last point of that particular query as the starting point for the new query. In this column, then, I am going to select the payment reference and I am going to remove all other columns. Now, the reason for this is at the moment, I am trying to create a unique list of payment references. So this only takes the payment references from the bank. So we also need the payment references from the nominal. So I'm going to append a query. And I'm going to append this with the nominal and select OK. Now again, I can just select this first row and I can remove other columns. So I'm going to remove all other columns. And because the nominal and the bank both contain some of the same reference numbers, what we need to do then is remove duplicates. So now what we're left with is a unique list of payment references. So I'm going to rename this query to RecOn, so I know what it is. It's my reconciliation. And in here, I am now going to merge my queries. So I'm going to take the payment reference from this column, and I'm going to go to my bank and I'm going to take the payment reference from the bank and I am going to select OK. Now by selecting the two of these, it knows to link both of these together. So I'm going to leave the join as a left outer join because I want everything from the first table and I am going to say OK. Now here we can expand this and I don't want all of the values, I just want the actual value. So now we have the value and we also see this are back to having some nulls. Let's then a merge the other query as well. So this time I am going to take the nominal and we're going to take our payment reference columns to match and we're going to say OK. Again, we need to expand this value here and we only need to take the value. Now I'm keeping this use original column name as, free, as prefix. I'm keeping that ticked because otherwise it'll pull in the name value and we won't know the difference between the bank value and the nominal value. So now we've pulled in the bank value and we've pulled in the nominal value. Again, I'm going to replace values. I'm going to replace null and I'm going to replace that with zero and say OK. And we've updated the nulls and the zeros. Now the next step is to add another column and we're going to add a custom column where we can calculate the difference and this is the difference between the nominal value and the bank value. So we can take our bank value and from our bank value we can minus our nominal value and say OK. So now we have been given the difference. The minuses are checks, as we can see, and the pluses are some sort of lodgements or they are some sort, there's something that has hit the bank. So now we can add a new column, a conditional column that actually explains all of this. To add a conditional column, under columns go to add column. We're going to call this status. So we know exactly what it is. And what we're going to say is if our bank value equals zero, well, then this item is not in the bank. We're going to add another rule there. And if the bank value equals, and we're going to select a column this time, the nominal ledger value, that means these items have been matched. Then we can take another value if our nominal value equals zero then it is not on the nominal. Finally, we can put in mismatch as our alternative and say OK. So what will happen here now is we get a new column telling us what is matched, what is not matched and so forth. I'm going to say close and load and close and load to. And again, I am just going to create a connection. So now we have a connection. Actually, I created a connection and a table. So I'm going to go onto a new sheet. And on this, I am going to say load to. Now this time, I am going to select a pivot report and I'm going to put it on a new worksheet. 
Now we have it on our new worksheet and we can begin to build a pivot table. So we can take our payment reference, we can take our bank value, we can take our difference and we can take our nominal value. So now we can see exactly we have our value per bank at the bottom here, we have our difference and we have our value per nominal. We can see our value per bank if we go to our bank statement being this last value here, 7169864, 7169864. The same with the nominal, we can hop over to the nominal and we would have to auto calculate this. So let us quickly auto calculate our values here to see if we have come up with the correct closing balance. So I am summing these together and I am just going to take one away from the other. So we have 70,652 and we have 70,652. Let's change this table now for a moment because what we're going to do is we can create a bank reconciliation and then we can create a list of items that are outstanding or have been matched or have not been matched. So what we're going to do is put our status into the rows and when we put our status into the rows we can see the values straight away. We can see that 75,000 has been matched. We can see that what's not in the nominal and we can see what's not in the bank. If we add our payment reference to this we can now also see the full detail of what has been posted and what hasn't been posted and what has to actually be done in your reconciliation. So now you can have an opening bank balance of your 26,000. You can have less outstanding checks or less things that aren't in the bank of, of 4,560, which is not in the bank. Then we have a nominal ledger value, which we've seen as 76,000. And to reconcile that, we need to adjust that by this 3522, because these figures are not in the bank. And then our bank reconciliation will work out. We can easily type out our bank reconciliation. So we have closing bank, and we can take the value from our closing bank statement. So we have our closing bank statement. Then we can say we have our outstanding checks or payments or whatever they are, which we have seen to be this value down here. Then we also, we can get the value of the two of these together. So our closing bank minus our outstanding checks. Then we will have our nominal, which is going to be equal to our nominal value. And I'm just gonna click it in like this for the moment. We need to adjust this and we need to adjust this by this minus three five and we can auto sum that. And now we can see our bank ref balances, 67 minus the 67. And in addition to that, we also have our summary data or our backup work showing what all of these values are. Now you see when I close that because I linked in them values, these updated and they did remove. Now another little tool that I want to show you here with this bank rec, you see these values here have been indented. Let's go to our design and go to our report layout. And in our report layout, you can change this to tabular form. Now by changing it to tabular form, then all of the payment references goes into a column on its own, which can be a lot easier to read at times, but when you collapse them, you are not able to see them. Now this bank reconciliation that we looked at, if these files had been saved as CSV files, how can you use this then as a model? Well, if we go back into our query here for a minute, and I'm going to edit this query. If this was a file under source here, you would have one of these tool symbols. And if you click this, you can change to a new source file. So all your transformation steps are still there and are still the same. You're just changing the source file that you're connected to. 
If you do your rec like I've just done it where the tables are in Excel, you can just update the tables by copying and pasting over them. Or you can connect two different tables. Another thing about this particular reconciliation that we actually looked at is that the opening balances actually matched each other. Now, this isn't always the case when you are reconciling accounts because the opening bank balance compared to the opening nominal ledger balance, as we've seen from this reconciliation here, is that you could end up having outstanding check amounts. And in this case, how would you adjust for this? So that is the basis of our learn and earn activity. So what we have is I have the same tables of data in a file for you to download. And again, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're going to need to head over to the blog post on the website to download this data so you can practice along. Now, what I've done is I have changed the opening balance and the opening balance is slightly different. And what we see in this worksheet is that you have an opening balance reconciliation. And my question to you is, what changes can you make or what changes do you need to make to the model that we have just created, that we have just looked at, that will update and bring in outstanding checks to make your model actually work with the opening amounts from the previous period? Next week, if you hop back to the blog post and if you're on my mailing list, you will get notification. I'll post the solutions to this learn and earn activity. In the meantime, give it a practice. Download the file, carry out the same type of steps that I carried out in this video, but you have some extra data now. We have some outstanding payments from the prior period. Our opening balance is different. And I want you to detail in the comment section of the blog post, not the comment section of the video on YouTube, what additional steps you made that enabled you reconcile this and create a model that you can use over and over to include this opening reconciliation. So I hope you enjoyed this week's video on learning to use Power Query to reconcile banks. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the video channel and turn on notifications so you never miss another video again. And do check out the article. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye now.